Good morning. The St. Regis Parish Faith Community gathers for the liturgical celebration of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We ask you to fully participate in the liturgy as a community by praying and singing together. The second collection is for Catholic University and Catholic schools. There are several announcements. Our parish picnic is today from 1 to 5 p.m. at the BY Park. A note to our older parishioners, if you need assistance getting down to the pavilion, the Knights of Columbus will be available from 1 to 2 p.m. offering valet service. Look for the valet sign and someone will drive you to the pavilion if you cannot find a close spot to park or if you need any assistance. This valet service will be only offered from 1 to 2 p.m. See you at the picnic. We are just about a month away from the start of the Discovering Christ program. Please see the bulletin for how to register for this life-changing experience coming to St. Regis Parish, Thursday, September 24th. All choir members should see the bulletin for start updates for the Chime Ensemble, the Teen Youth Chorale, and the Handbell Choir. Also, cantors are being asked to attend a vocal workshop on Sunday, September 20th. Please read the bulletin for more information. Pope Francis wrote a gentle and beautiful book entitled, The Joy of the Gospel. We will be watching a video and discussing Pope Francis's book here at St. Regis for five sessions this fall. All who attend will receive a free copy of Pope Francis's book, The Joy of the Gospel. Please call the Faith Formation Office to reserve your book. More information is in the bulletin and on the parish website. We are still in need of new Eucharistic ministers for both the 5 p.m. and the 9.30 a.m. Masses. Please consider doing this worthy ministry and call the Music and Liturgy Office for more information today. The opening hymn is number 930, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 930. So the King of Heaven, to His feet your tribute bring, ransom healed, restored, forgiven, evermore His praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, Him for his grace and favor to his children in distress. Praise him still the same as ever, slow to shine and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, glorious in his faith.
everybody. And I'm happy to be here again with you here at St. Regis, a wonderful community, very, very wonderful participation, the singing, everything, always such a joy, uplifting. I really enjoy celebrating with you. I pray for all of you and for your families this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we come together this morning, a people of faith, to celebrate the Lord's special presence with us in word, in sacrament, and in each other. We come as a repentant people, always mindful that we're not perfect, that we have our own sinfulness. And we always turn to the Lord and ask the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you always forgive the repentant sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, you empower us with the grace and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. In thanksgiving to God for his forgiveness and his mercy, for the beauty of this day, let us together give praise to God. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. <clears throat> God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts this morning the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of respect, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you. You shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? 
Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The Lord's rule is to be trusted, the simple find wisdom. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is holy, Abiding forever, the decrees of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting love. The precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, giving light to the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are worth more than gold, than the finest gold, sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a fruit a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans, and widows and their afflictions, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Father will to give us birth by the word of truth. 
that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, they did not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they did not eat without purifying themselves. And there were many other things that they have traditionally observed. For instance, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? And Jesus responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines mere human precepts. You disregard God's command, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd, and he said to them, Hear me now, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters from outside can defile that person. But the things that come from within are what defiles. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. I don't want you to get nervous because I don't have a five-page homily here, but I do have some various uh, points of interest that I want to bring into uh, my homily today. And actually, I'd like to refer to the homily more like a catechism lesson today. We talk about, you know, catechism today and learning like that, and I think this is the time also for lessons and learning uh, about something. And I think the gospel and the scriptures today are very important because we need to see them all together as one special message. And that message basically is what God is in favor of and what God is not in favor of. Simple as that. And he's speaking to us today, despite the fact that these readings from Deuteronomy, the first reading, to the gospel are thousands of years. Thousands of years from the time that Moses spoke to the people and Jesus speaking to the scribes and Pharisees and the people. So all those years, but it's the same lesson. And I think that it's important for us to know today to have a, maybe a clearer understanding of what that lesson is. So, you know, I want to begin by telling you about an experience I had in 1995. I went to, I was, I went to Israel for a sabbatical. And I was there for eight weeks in Israel. Wonderful experience, but very heavy because my sabbatical took place at the Holocaust Museum, at the Yad Vashem. 
and I did the eight-week study on the Holocaust in, 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 in Israel. And I lived in Jerusalem, which was um, a, a number of miles away from Yad Vashem, but we stayed at a hotel there. And then the bus would pick us up every day and take us up to Yad Vashem, and that's where we would have our classes and everything. And sometimes our classes were taught by survivors of the Holocaust. And you can imagine how intense the whole thing was. But while I lived in Jerusalem, not far from the old city, outside the gates of the old city, but nevertheless in Jerusalem there, and the interesting thing was that through the course of those eight weeks, I would observe how the Jewish people observed Shabbat. Now, Shabbat is the Sabbath. And you know that the Sabbath for the Jewish people is Saturday. And it's from dusk to dawn. It goes from Friday evening to Saturday evening. Sunset, you know, and then through the sunrise back to sunset again. That's why, for instance, we started to have Saturday evening masses. Because our Sunday, in a sense, begins with Vespers on Saturday and goes to sunset on Sunday, really. So we were really observing the Shabbat, in a way, with Saturday night mass. That's where that comes from. It's not just to give us a better opportunity. It's still keeping faithful to the Shabbat. Keep holy the Sabbath, the Lord said in the commandments. And so that in itself is an observance of the law. But one of the things I became very aware of all those unique laws that the Jewish people had. Now, you have to remember also, and I don't know if you know this or not, but Judaism is very interesting in Israel. There are really four types of Jews. There are the Orthodox Jews, and they are the very, very strict observance of the Jewish law. You see them in movies, etc. you know, they wear the black hats, the hair is long on the side, they never cut their hair on the side, and always wear black, and the women always dress with long dress, all these kind of observances and laws. Hundreds of them they have. And some of the ones we noticed when we were living in the hotel, for instance, in the hotel that I stayed in, they have what they call a Shabbat elevator. Now, the Shabbat elevator is a special one, so during the Sabbath, you ride that. And the reason they call it the Shabbat elevator is because it stops at every floor. You don't press the buttons, because that would be violating a law. When you press a button, it shows that you are in control. And therefore, you don't do anything that gives you the sense of control, because it's all about God. And so in the Sabbath, you rest, and you go back, and you let God kind of have the prominence of that day. That's what it means by keeping the Sabbath. We step back. We don't take control. So they don't light a cigarette. They don't light a match. They don't light fires. They don't put out fires. And all these purification rituals and everything else that they have, all these laws and regulations are some things that they keep. Now, when you go back to Deuteronomy, though, when the Lord first spoke to them, he said to them, this is the law. And they relished the law. That's the only connection they had with God. Remember, Jesus didn't come into the world yet. They had no connection with God through Christ, just the law. And they loved the law, because loving the law is loving God. It's as simple as that. Obeying the law is loving God. And that's what God was looking for. It would help you know how much I love you. So the law that he taught them, and it all comes down to one basic law, which they called the Shema. The Shema to this very day is the most sacred prayer to the Jew very short prayer, and it's this, and you hear it in Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And these words which I command you today shall be upon your heart. Now remember, this is the beginning, when the Lord is giving the law to all his people, the Israel, the Jewish people. Then he goes on to say, and this is what the Orthodox do to this very day, Therefore, place these words of mine upon your heart and upon your soul and bind them for a sign on your hand that they shall be a reminder between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children to speak of them when you sit in the house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you rise. And you shall inscribe them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates so that your days, all your days and the days of your children, may be prolonged on the land which the Lord swore to you and to your fathers to give them for as long as the heavens are above the earth. And this thing I have here I brought back with me from Israel. It's called the mezuzah. 
Not actually the case. It's, a, it's adorned with the Jewish symbols, etc. But inside this is the scroll. And prescribed on the scroll is the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And so you post that on the doorpost, just like that. Every Jewish home has it. And then they go in the house, they touch it. When they leave the house, they touch it. Always remembering the Shema. The Lord is God. Love the Lord your God. Always reminded of the law. Never forgetting the law. Never giving up on God. And even if you ever go to Squirrel Hill, and you see Orthodox Jews a lot in Squirrel Hill because we're a great Jewish, a lot of Orthodox are there. You get down there on a Friday night on the Shabbat, and you'll see the little boys going on. Jesus said, the Lord spoke to them, speak to the children of Israel and tell them to make for themselves fringes on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to attach a thread of blue on the fringe. They shall be called the sits, and you shall look upon them and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And you will not follow after your heart and after your eye by which you go astray. You remember the Shema. See, all those things, the white strings you see hanging from the coats and all that are simply to remind them, don't ever forget the law. I am the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with your heart. It's as simple as that. Don't forget. Look at us when we're going out. You see, we come to Mass. We come to worship God. And then we leave. And maybe perhaps God is not as onto our minds and everything. We have a tendency to forget. That's why we have holy um, symbols in our homes. Crucifixes, holy pictures, always reminding us of that. Okay, so we go to the gospel now. And Jesus is very upset. Why? Because they took it to the extreme. They kept all the laws, but they misunderstood them. And when Jesus said, when the man went up to Jesus and said, he said, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole soul, and thy mind. And the second is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Whoa. It became a whole different thing then. If you really love God, you're going to love your neighbor. You can't have one without the other. And the Jewish Pharisees and scribes were so strict on the law, but they were the ones that were always, you know, looking down on other people, criticizing them, judging them, and everything else. Always kept the law but their hearts were far from God. They didn't have the love in their hearts for one another. Loving God, this is what the Holy Father, Pope Francis, is calling us to. He's calling us to mercy, compassion, and forgiveness, especially those on the outside, especially the people who are suffering from fringes, or loneliness, maybe whatever addiction, whatever they might have, they're in need of love and compassion. It would be like coming to Mass all the time, never missing Mass, but being miserable to live with or being miserable to work with, or just being a mean person. We could go to Mass every day, every Sunday, because we don't want to commit a mortal sin. We don't want to do something. But nevertheless, we don't see the relationship with how we live our lives. And so we look at St. James in that second reading, and that's what St. James is expressing again when he says that we have to kind of see that, that to real love, humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you, and is able to save your souls. That's the word of God as he speaks to us. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Did you ever hear the statement made, what you do speak so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. What you do speak so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. Or actions speak louder than words. All these kind of things make us see. We gotta be hearers of the word, and doers the word. And so James said, religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction. And that means any act of charity, any act of charity that we do, be mindful of the poor. You're gonna hear this when Pope Francis comes to Philadelphia. He's gonna talk about our need to be concerned about the poor, the disadvantaged, getting out of ourselves and becoming the doers of the word and to keep oneself stained, unstained from the world. So all these things are so important for us to remember as we carry out so faithfully. That's why you're here today, because you come to be strengthened in the Lord. I want to close with the, with the psalm response, which is um, uh, the capitalization of all this in a prayer for all of us. But before I do, so I, I, yesterday I had a funeral for um, Tom Babio, a very prominent um, uh, parishioner here at, uh, at St. Regis, very holy man. And after the funeral, uh, as I was standing in the back of the church there, 
a woman came up to me and she said, Tom always was after me to come back to Mass. He always was after me to come back to Mass, come back to the church. And so I thought this is the best way that I could pay honor to Tom by coming to his funeral mass. And I said to her, that's great, would you consider coming back? And she said, I think I will. So you look at Tom and you say, he was a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. He was in a sense an evangelist, not afraid to say to somebody else, why don't you come to church? Why don't you consider coming the next Sunday or something? Like, you know, when you become the doer of the word, very, very important, such a simple thing, but so important. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue, who harms not his fellow man or woman, he who does these things shall not be disturbed. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand now and profess together our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, God from God, begotten of man, and the Trinity of the Father. Give him all things to me, that's when he found salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in front of the Virgin Mary, he came down. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, the door to glorify, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. <coughs> As we gather together together our prayers now, we are confident in God's faithfulness and we offer our prayers in petition. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Holy Spirit may continue to renew us in living out the gospel in our daily lives, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For national leaders here and around the world, that the Lord may lead them to fulfill his justice through their concern for their people's welfare. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer hardships due to storms or drought, that God will answer their prayers and bring them relief. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the Discovering Christ program and the Joy of the Gospel series, that those in need of renewing or finding their faith may attend the programs and know the joy of a personal relationship with Christ. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Tom Babio, who was buried this past week, that he will be embraced by Christ in his heavenly home. Let us pray. That Jesus may welcome all our loved ones into eternal rest. And during this Mass, we remember in a particular way George Velmasoni, Walter Nowak, and the people of the parish. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. Strengthen our faith in you so that we might give a more faithful and effective witness to the gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The presentation hymn is number 937, Christ Be Our Light, number 937. truth we turn to you make us your own your holy people light for the world to see christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness christ be our light shine in your church Gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light. your bread broken for others shared until all 